December 27, 2022, which is today, is a great day because I finished Auto Tools second edition. Uh, that's the book by John Calcote, and that was a book published in November 2019. Very important book for me. I was in the middle of reading it in 2020. And of course, if you remember, 2020 is the year we had the pandemic uh, here in the United States. And so a lot was going on. Well, in some cases, there wasn't a lot going on because we were all pretty quiet uh, in our, you know, lockdowns and all that good stuff. But so 2020 is the year where I made a number of changes in my life and I had been working on this project, this personal project of mine for about seven years at that point. Okay, so this this seven year project at that point, um, very important project program that I was right. It's not important for, in the grand scheme of things. It's important to me, but it's a program, a, a software program that I was writing for Linux and I've been writing programs for a very long time. And so, but when I reached the stage of trying to conform this program that I, that I wrote to even more of the Linux standards than it, I had already done, I had ran into an area in terms of how to get a program set up for Linux that I did not anticipate, that I did not even know about. I, I knew about it in passing. It's funny how when you, you are doing things and you don't know what's actually behind it, you just say, okay, like for example, there's all these Linux programs that you can download when you're in Linux, right? And you do uh, dot forward slash configure, okay? Dot forward slash configure. I've been doing that for years. I've been doing that for a long time. Dot forward slash configure. This is when you want to download the source code. It, it's, it comes in a zip file, the source code for a program. It comes in a zip file, and you want to um, install it on your program. You, you just want to install it straight from the source code. You don't even want to install it through the normal Linux operating systems package manager. OK, because maybe the, the one that's officially distributed is an older version than the one you can get fresh as source code direct from the Internet. So dot forward slash configure. Everybody learns how to do that. And it's pretty straightforward. Turns out that when you're building a Linux program and you want others to be able to do that. There's a lot more involved in that. There's quite a bit involved in that. It's not a it's not a simple process of saying dot forward slash configure or writing a configure script, you might say, right? Um, you could do that, but your script isn't going to work like all of all of those right out the gate. But I actually didn't have any intention of writing a configure script. What I wanted to do was say, okay, if I'm going to push this program out to um, Ubuntu or Debian. I'm just going to do a .deb package. If I'm going to push it out to Fedora or Red Hat, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a .rpm package. So what did I do? I went and I read up on how to do RPM packages, how to do .deb packages, and I succeeded in creating, cr creating them, right? Uh, not a problem there. But I looked at the process it took for me to actually get there and make those, those processes work, and I said... I'm noticing something here that would make this much easier. Those, those package systems are designed a very specific way. I kind of I worked around them. You might say I hacked around them. Um, I didn't let the structure of those systems stand in my way. I, I got it done. But I wanted to do it a more fluent way. I want it to be more proficient in how I package that up. When I do this stuff, I want every nook and cranny, every 
uh, I to be dotted, every T to be crossed. I want it to be perfect from top to bottom, okay? And so I said, okay, what is going on here? And the more I read into it, I said, oh, okay. That's the relationship between the dot configure script and all this other stuff. They all work together. And the glue that binds them all is autoconf. Auto configuration, auto tools, auto make. And if you use those tools proficiently and you use those tools fluently, then building RPM packages and dot dev packages and um, Pac-Man packages for Arch Linux and um, you know whatever the package format it, uh, there is out there, I would also include um, possibly Snaps and Flatpak, but probably not. They're, they seem to be going in a totally different direction, but learning and applying auto tools proper is going to be the cleanest, neatest way to make sure that the software that you build for Linux and Unix systems integrates smoothly with the deployment uh, processes that, that have been put in place over the last approximately 20 years. And so I endeavored to learn auto tools and found it to be a pretty in-depth system. And so I'm going to talk about that in more depth in another, another video. Um, but this is more about celebrating this accomplishment of uh, digesting or ingesting the information about auto tools. And I had multiple starts and stops. I had other priorities, other things that were more important to me um, that I needed to take care of uh, in these past two years. And so I kept putting the reading of this book on hold. And so now that I have, I haven't finished reading the book. There are, there are 18 chapters in the book. And so, um, but chapter eight is the end of the meat of what I needed to know. The other chapters, they're very useful. It's it's kind of like um, refinements over the main process. And so um, I am extremely pleased to have now ingested this information and now look at applying this information to my personal projects and seeing the, um, the, the speed at which I can now take the single body of, of source code that I put together and project that into different environments with much less um, barrier to integrating the, the code with those environments. So what that means is it's say, if I want um, this program to run on different versions of Linux, that will be much, much easier now. If I want it to run on Mac, if I want it to run on Windows, much easier now. And uh, although I did all of the hard work of figuring out how to do that the hard way, um, and even though this is going to um, add a lot more process and some would say boilerplate to how I would build the software, um, it's going to make the mechanics and the, the steps of um, integrating the code in those different systems much easier uh, than it was the way that I was doing it in uh, 2019 through uh, 2020. So extremely pleased with this. And this is a celebration on this milestone. And I couldn't be happier.